Hi, I'm Justin Kirk and this is my video series called the card series and in this video I'm going to show you how to make the egg card. So what it is is basically I click R on my keyboard or the char character you assign to the card and it uses the card in the bottom left and after you use it you can see that an egg has appeared above my character and if you click again it will throw the egg. And there's two possibilities so far for the egg. One is that it will drop a bunch of items and the other possibility is it will spawn an evil chicken that will try to kill you. Uh, so in the final release of the game, it's going to do some more things. It's going to have a chance of spawning a golden item. It might heal you. It might do a bunch of other stuff. But just for the sake of keeping this video pretty brief, the, the main things that we're going to go over are how to make an egg and how to throw it and then how to make this explosion effect that you can see. And then you can... Um, I'll also maybe show you how to download this chicken. I just got this out of the Unity Asset Store. Um, but yeah, let's get started. Uh, before we get started, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. Most importantly though, make sure you join my Discord. Uh, you're probably not doing anything better anyway, so you could come and join and say hi to me and show me your game and show me what you're working on. And uh, you can give me ideas for my game or you can send screenshots of whatever you're working on. But uh, yeah, just come join my Discord and... Uh, yeah, so the first thing we need to do is uh, make an egg. So if you go into Blender, you can delete all of the items that are there and just uh, press Shift A on your keyboard and make a UV sphere. Press 3 on your keyboard, you'll get a side view and you can press G and Z to move the sphere upwards. And then if you press tab, you can go into edit mode. Just click on this top vertice and then go into proportional editing, which is this button right here at the top. Um, if you press S to scale, you can scroll out on your scroll wheel and then you can pull upwards. Oh my God, why is it not working? Uh, geez, okay, just maybe make this smaller. No. Yeah, so as I was saying, uh, you know, just make a UV sphere. So go to mesh and UV sphere and you can press three to get a side view and press G and Z to move it up on the uh, scale. If you press tab, you can go into um, edit mode for the vertices and then just click on this top vertice and turn on proportional editing at the top. Make sure you're in a side view because apparently if you're in a top down view, it does the wrong thing. And then you just want to pull this guy directly upwards until it's kind of egged you know, like that, which is perfect. And then, you know, you can make this whatever shape you want. But uh, anyway, yeah, so the next step is to do the UV. So just to make sure the UVs are correct. If you press Alt on the side of one of these um, things, you'll select all of the things on the side of it. And then you can right click and make a... If you press U, sorry, press U on your keyboard. Don't press uh, right click, click Mark Seam. And this will put this red line on the side of your egg. And then you can go into UV editing and select everything and just press U and then unwrap. This should give you like this egg looking um, UV map that we're gonna use and that's perfect. So then go back to layout and then we just wanna uh, shade this smooth. So just right click and click shade smooth. And then if you go to the, if you go to the materials, you can um, just add a material. It doesn't matter. We're not gonna be keeping this material anyway, but we just need to add a material so we're able to set a color in Unity. And then if you go to shading, you can right click somewhere or sorry, uh, press shift A somewhere, click search and type an image. We just wanna put this image somewhere and click new. And then if you drag downwards on these two, you can type in 2048 and it should do both of them. And we're gonna call this egg normal. So basically what this is gonna be is it's gonna be a normal map for the egg so that it can have some texture on it so it's not just a smooth egg. So what we can do is we'll drag this color into a height of a bump node. And then we'll drag the normal into the normal like this. And then if we go to texture paint, we can press Z and go into material preview. And then we just wanna change these settings. So change the radius down to one, change the strength down to like 0.81, something very, very low. Uh, you don't want it to be high because I'll, I'll show you in a second why, what we're gonna do. But then in this, um, on the right side, if you just go under stroke, you can change this to dots and then just change the jitter to the max. And if you do this, you can drag this, um, I don't know if you can see it on the edge of the egg, but it puts like little dots all over it. Uh, 
Yeah, we just want them to be a little bit larger than that. So change their radius to five. And yeah, you know, just draw some dots. This is gonna be like the texturing on the side of the egg. Yeah. Uh, this is looking pretty good, but I think that the strength needs to be less. It's kind of, um, let me just zoom in so I can see. The strength of it is too much. It still needs to be less than that. So we just want like to very, very faint. This is looking way better. Just enough to give it like, kind of like some texture. Okay, so when you're done making little bumps all over your egg, we just want to save the normal map. Uh, so you can see that there's like little white dots all over this. And what a normal map is, is basically inside of Unity, the way the light hits the object, it will make it look like it's um, not perfectly smooth. It will be kind of bumpy based on like what the normal map is. So we just need to save this image. So you can't just save the image the way that it is. You can, but it's not as good if you do that. What we need to do is go back to shading and create another node here. So if we right click or shift A and click type in image. Oh my God, seriously. Uh, shift A and type in image. You're gonna be the death of me. Image. Yeah, and we'll create a new image and we'll call this egg normal export. And just make it the exact same. Make sure that this lines up 2048 by 2048. And then what we want to do is if we go over here into the rendering engine and change it to cycles, we can export the normal map. So under bake here, we can go to normal and make sure this is plus Y. If you're working in Unreal, it should be negative Y. So if you're going to make an egg for Unreal Engine, make sure you do negative Y and the green axis and, or the G, the green um scale rather than it should be negative y for unreal and plus y for unity and then you just have to click bake all right so now that the baking is done you can see in the bottom left it's generated this like bluish image um this is what a normal map actually is like the correct colors of it and this is why i was saying we need to bake it but like we can't just directly save the image and then put it into unity because it won't actually work correctly unity does have its own way of converting an image to a normal map so it's technically it could work a little bit but it's not the same as like if you make a model in blender you should bake the normal map in blender directly because it ends up as a better quality image so so if you go back to your texture paint, you should see this blue image instead. And you can see like there's like the little bumps are drawn in rather than little white dots. Like before we were just using black and white and now it's the actual um, bump, like the actual normal map. But anyway, so just at the top, there's a picture of an image here. Uh, it's not the picture, it's to the left. Click image and then save as. And then if you go, just save it somewhere where you're gonna know where it is. So I'm saving mine as egg normal export, but you can save, obviously save yours as whatever you want to. And then we need to export the egg as well. So if you just go file export, FBX file, and then we can just call this egg. I'm gonna put mine in my downloads folder. Make, make sure you remember where it is. I'm gonna call this actually egg tutorial so I don't save over my other egg that I already made. So then if you go to, uh, just change this to FBX unit scale and then Y or Z forward. And then, yeah, you don't really need to change anything else. So just click export FBX. Okay, so back in Unity, I've created this egg tutorial folder and I'm just gonna drag this egg that I just made into the folder. And then I'm also gonna drag the egg normal export into the folder as well. And then let's go ahead and drag this into the scene. So just anywhere you want to, just minimize some of these folders that I have open, hang on. So I just drag this into the scene here. So in my scene, this is really, really small because my, my scale is massive. I was really dumb when I started the project and I started my project scale. It's just massive, like it's huge. Like, so in order for you to be able to see my egg, I'm gonna have to do nine by nine by nine at the very minimum. But your egg, you probably get away with one by one, like the normal scale of <laughs> that it's supposed to be. So when you see the egg, it just kind of looks like this to begin with. So we just want to right click this and click create material. And we're going to call this egg material. I'm calling my tutorial. You don't have to obviously, because you probably don't have another egg, but then we just want to take this egg normal export and drag it into the normal map on this. And then we can drag this egg material onto the egg. So if you've done this correctly, uh, Okay, so we've clearly messed something up with the UVs of the egg. 
Uh, unfortunately, this probably means that Okay, so basically what I did was I took the same exact egg that I had already and I just went into UV editing and I deleted the seam. So if you press U, you can press clear seam and it will delete the seam that you have selected. And then I pressed U again and I used smart UV project. And then I just left the default settings and I pressed OK and it generated this UV, which is actually better for this object than the one that I had. The other alternative would be to make like a round circle, probably around the top and the bottom. So that way it generates better UVs that are actually like because we don't want a line down the side of the egg because an egg doesn't have a line down the side of it. So you want the, the cut to be where um, it would be kind of like in real life. So the circle at the very top, it might even be better to make one even closer to the point so that it doesn't like... Um, anyway, the, like this is what we kind of want essentially. So I did that and then I just redid, you have to draw it again because these little dots were drawn in the spot that they were in like the other UV. So you gotta redo the entire drawing pretty much. So after you're done that, uh, you just have to export it again. Make sure you export the egg and the image. And then after you're done that, we just have to go back to the um, tutorial and we're just gonna start this over. So we're just gonna delete everything and we can just drag this um, back in the exact same spot. And then we'll do this and we'll, uh, create a new material called new egg material. And then we just need to drag this export on top of, actually we need to click this export and change it from default to normal map and then pre press apply. And then if we go back to the material, we can drag this on top of the uh, normal map and then we can drag this onto the egg. Cool, so if you've done this right, you should have like an egg that's in your scene. So we just wanna right click on the egg tutorial, go to the prefab, click unpack completely. And then we wanna add some things to this. So it needs a rigid body. Uh, you can, yeah, to just leave the default settings of the rigid body and then it also needs a sphere collider. So it looks like it generated this perfectly if yours is not directly around the egg. This is where it will hit. So like if you throw this at a wall or it hits something, this is where it will collide. So make sure this lines up with the actual egg itself. And then, uh, yeah, when you're done with that, you just want to drag the egg from the scene back into this. So you can create what's called a prefab. And then we can use this prefab as the object that we're gonna throw. This is the projectile that we're gonna use. All right, so the next step of this video was to make an egg shell. So this is what's gonna come out of the egg when it blows up. So like when you blow, when it blows up in the video, you can see that there's like little pieces of egg that go flying everywhere along with the yellow like goopy stuff or whatever. I'm not gonna show you how to make this because this is gonna be too long of a video if I do that. But basically I took a square, like a cube in Blender and I just um, made it very, very thin, like uh, scaled the Z axis down to almost zero. And then I cut it with the knife tool. And then after I cut it and I made enough cuts in it, I used the subdivision surface modifier and I set the levels viewport to three. So to add a subdivision surface, you just click this and click subdivision surface. And then you set the levels viewport to three. I'm gonna attach this shell to the, it's gonna be in the description, okay? So you could just download it from the description. There's also a normal map that I attach to it as well. And you have to do, um, you would essentially have to do both if I if I didn't add this. It's just, it's gonna take way too long. So to save the, the trouble, I'm just doing, gonna add it to the video. Anyway, so back in Unity, you need to make a shader for the eggshell for the explosion. So in order to use a um, model or a FPX file in the explosion, we have to, we, we can only use the actual thing. So like when you export an FBX file, there's the mesh, right? This is the only part of the, the that we can use. And inside of VFX graph, we can actually apply a material to it. So we made like, for example, this egg that we made, we added this material, which had the normal map in it to make the edge look all cracked or whatever. Well, in order for us to do that with this, we have to apply a shader. So what we, what we need to do is if you right click at the bottom here, you can create a new shader graph. 
Uh, it's gonna be a lit shader graph and we'll call this egg shell shader tutorial. And if you double click on this, all we need to do is drag the normal. That is, again, it's gonna be attached to the video. It's not this new egg export. It's gonna be a completely different one. Uh, we're gonna drag the normal here like this. When you drag it in, it will automatically make a sample texture 2D, right? And it automatically selects that the type is normal provided you've selected that in the dropdown for the um, image that you imported. And then you just have to drag this RGBA into the normal slot. And this will apply the this um, normal onto the object. So this is the shader that we're gonna use inside of our um, VFX graph, which is what we're gonna use to make the explosion. Okay, so the next thing we need to make in this is the actual explosion itself. So in the blank space at the bottom, if you right click, you can create a visual effect graph. So it's just under visual effects, visual effects graph. If you don't see this option, then you have to turn on visual effects graph. So if you go to the window drop down at the top, you can go to the package manager and just change this from my assets to Unity registry. And you can type in visual effects like this and uh, maybe just type in VFX. Oh, you're killing me. Visual, just type in visual, that's probably gonna, yeah, so if you type in visual, you'll get an option for visual effect graph. In the bottom right here, mine says remove because it's already installed, but if you don't see it, yours will probably have the install option, so just install it. After you install it, you can create it like this, and when you're done that, you can drag the VFX into the scene, okay? So I'm gonna delete this one because I already made it, and I'm just gonna go over the settings because like I said, this video is getting really long, and you could just copy the settings that I already have. So let me close out of this one that I made. Um, so when you open the VFX graph, it should look like this. Okay, we're just going to ignore this other section for right now. And we're just going to worry about this. So at the very top, instead of using a constant spawn rate, we want to use a single burst. So to do this, you can delete the constant spawn rate that's there. If you click on this, you can press spacebar and just type in burst. And there's a single burst option. And then if we go down a little bit, we just actually um, want to change the bounds to be a little bit bigger. So you could just change this to like 50 by 50 by 50. Yours doesn't have to be this big, but my scale is really big. The only reason we're changing this is because if we go out of range of the explosion in the VFX graph, it won't show it. So like if the camera gets too far away, it won't show it. And the way that my game is working is that when you're in a room, you should be able to see everything in the room. So I need this number to be a lot bigger just because my scale is so big. Then we wanna add a set scale node so the the reason we're doing this is because when i imported my shell it was too big vertically so like the the flat portion of it was way wider because i multiplied everything by nine or whatever right um so it ended up being really thick so let me just show you what i'm talking about let me see if i can find my egg shell so there it is let me just drag this in here and we'll just double click on it so you can see that I have nine by nine by three here, but when I put nine by nine by nine, it's very, very rounded. And it kind of looks like a popcorn rather than a egg shell. So I changed this to three here and four in my VFX graph. So set scale is not the same as set size. Set scale lets you control all three of the axis. So that's why we're using set scale and not set size. And then we're setting the size. It's really important that you, if you click on this, you can see on the right, there's a composition. If you have overwrite and this is happening after set size, it will replace the size of it with this. So the first one can be overwrite, but the second one should be multiply. And scale and size are not the same thing. So these are both fine as overwrite because one is scale and one is size. But if we set the size again later in this, or if you have the default at the very bottom where it says set size over life, you have to change it from overwrite to multiply or get rid of it altogether. You should just be using exactly what's in my graph to make this work. So. We're gonna set scale. So you just press spacebar and you start typing set scale. Uh, and you could just click this and then it will add this. And so you need to do that for that. Set size needs to be added. Then we're gonna set the position to an arc sphere. So this is very similar to the shape in the particle system for a sphere, okay? So, and then I changed, if you go into the dropdown of the arc sphere, I changed the radius to 10. So make sure you do that as well. We're working in local space for everything here. And then after this, you have to add set velocity. 
Make sure you don't set the velocity first because when you get the position, if you haven't set it to a sphere yet, it will be the wrong position. So after we've set this to the sphere, we're getting the, the position of each of the um, vertices so that we can apply the uh, velocity to the direction that they are. So let me just draw this in paint because it'll be easier. So let's say this is the sphere, right? So each of the particles is on the edge of the sphere and get position will get the distance from like the, the middle to where they are. So when we're setting the velocity, it will go in the direction. It makes it go outwards in a circle rather than um, setting the velocity normally is just X, Y, and Z. It's not as, uh, it's not as dispersed anyway. Uh, so then we're gonna, so if you right click in the space, you can create node and just type in position. Um, there's the get attribute position one. This is the one you're looking for. And then you can drag it into a multiply vector and multiply it by 15. And then just put that into the B of the set velocity. So if you press spacebar here and you type in set velocity, it doesn't give you the random option by default. You can add that on the right side here. So if you click this drop down beside random, you can turn this on like this. And then that's how you can get both options. Make sure you're only putting this into the B value of the set velocity random. And then you can leave the regular at zero, zero, zero. Sometimes I like to do like negative 15, 15. So you can multiply this by like, if you put another multiply operator here, you could multiply by negative one, which would make it negative 15. And you could put negative 15 into this. That way, while you're multiplying, uh, you could, when you change this number, it will affect both numbers at once. But in this case, we only want it to go outwards. We don't want any of the particles, like if this is the sphere, we don't want them going inwards like this, because that's what negative would do, right? So that's that for that. The lifetime I've put one to three, this is how long the particles live before they disappear. I've added gravity. So in the update particle, this is the very same thing as update in coding. So like in the script, the, this happens every frame. So every frame we're applying negative 100 in the Y axis, your number probably needs to be significantly less than mine because like you're gonna have to play with these numbers because my scale is so large that 100 is not very much for me, but that's gonna be probably way too much for you. So like I said, just mess with the numbers. My scale is probably 10 times the size of yours. So you could use maybe the default when you add gravity, there's a default number that's there. So it's 9.81, right? Gravity is just like these. this amount will be applied to the thing every frame. So you could do with this positive, like you could have like the opposite of gravity where it goes upwards or whatever direction you want, but every frame it will change this, up, like it will move this amount and it, it uh, is like a stacking force so it keeps getting added every uh, frame. It's not the same as moving it like in a static amount, but um, I think I might've disabled this. So maybe I'm not even using gravity. So there's, there's a checkbox on the right here that I'm just turned it off, I guess. Um, and then, so this is the biggest part here. So the default that comes with this is going to be output particle quad. So you need to delete the default that's there. And then if you drag this, you can type in output particle mesh. When you do this, it should look like this. In the first field, you need to put the shader that you made that had the normal map, which I, again, I'm going to be posting the normal map and the eggshell as, um, I'll, I'll probably post the egg too. Why not? I'll post the egg as well. So I'll po post the egg, the normal map for the egg, the eggshell and the normal map for the eggshell. But you remember you have to add an egg shader, like the, the normal map gets added to the normal in this shader. And then you can use the shader in this drop down. Um, and then you just have to drag. So see where it says mesh here. You just have to drag the cube for the egg into this. So if you go into your egg, um, let me just actually find it again. Hang on, egg tutorial. If you open your egg like this, if you don't see this, like if you're seeing this screen, when you look at this, you just have to drag this little bar at the bottom to the left here. And then your egg has a drop down, and you could just drag the sphere to where this is. And then we want to orient these along the velocity. So if you press space here at the bottom, um, make sure you select um, something in here and then press space and then you can just type in orient along velocity. This will make the particle look the direction that it's going. So it will, because all of the eggs are starting in a sphere and they're going away from the middle, this will make it look in the correct direction. A lot of the time you want this to face the camera position. So like if it was a picture or an image, you kind of always want it to be facing the direction of the camera. But if it's a mesh and you like, it's not a, 
picture. It doesn't need to be facing the camera. It needs to be facing the direction it's going. You need to use a lot of velocity. These are the most useful things. Um, all of these are pretty self-explanatory what they do. You could just read them, right? So let me delete this. So this is part one. And let me just turn this off if I can. We'll just turn this off for right now so we can see what it looks like without um, the thing. So let me just put this over here and we'll turn this to the game view and we'll just, not very big because the number of, hang on, let me turn on the plane and the walls and the door. And I'm just gonna turn gizmos off. So yeah, so you don't want too many of these because it's eggshells, so like, how many eggshells really come out of an egg. It is a pretty big egg, but maybe 30, let's see. 30 is looking pretty good. And then, so then the next um, system that we have, so you can do this in the same VFX graph. If you just press spacebar, you can create a new context, or no, sorry, a new um, system, and you can just make it empty or um, you could make uh, simple mesh output or particle system. This one, simple particle system. This is the one we're looking for. Or even better, um, you can copy paste this. So you could just copy this entire thing and just paste the whole thing. And then that way you have these two things already. Like the sphere is already set and all of like the settings are kind of already set. And then you just have to go through and fix the settings compared to what I have. So for your second particle system, we want the burst to be much larger because it's like, um, it's like yellow goo for the egg. So let me just turn it back on, hang on. So it's like the yellow goo for the egg, right? So we want the number of particles to be significantly higher. So 500 is a lot. Make sure you change the capacity to match it. So you need the capacity to be way more than the actual amount. Probably 1000 would be good, but I've set mine to 10,000 because I've been messing with the numbers. Um, I'm using the same nodes, but like the numbers are different. So for the size of these individual things, I'm using one to 25. Uh, that's a massive difference. I've also drawn a picture for the output. So for like these little particles, these, this is a custom drawn picture and I'm gonna show you what the picture looks like. Again, I'm gonna post this on the video so you don't have to make this if you don't want to. Um, I can kind of give you a description of how I made it, but I just did a bunch of scribbling. So it's not really like, so this is the drawing that I did for this. So like I said, you don't, you don't have to draw this. I'm just gonna paste this onto the uh, video. I think I just I just scribbled. So there's a program called Autodesk Sketchbook. It's completely free. Uh, just make your image a square. So change uh, um, the image size to maybe like 500 by 500. And then on the right here, there's a layer editor. If you're missing any of these little windows in the window tab, you can turn them on. So make sure you turn on a layer editor. You can change the background to black. And then I just used the paintbrush and I think I used, you have to use white because we're gonna apply the color in Unity. So white multiplies with colors really well. So for example, if you do like red and you multiply it by like, and you end up using blue in Unity, it will make it purple, right? So you wanna use white so you can pick the color that it, that it appears in Unity. And then I just like, I just drew something. Try not to touch the edges because it will make a square box instead. So I just drew something and then uh, you can change the opacity of the brush with this little thing here. So you could turn it up and then you can change the size of your brush to be less. And then I just ended up drawing something. I spent a lot of time doing this and then I erased certain edges of it or whatever. And then I also, I think I used this smear brush to like smudge it all together. So I just mess with it like this, I'm pretty sure. But um, yeah, this is how I did this. So you can try to make your own if you want to. Um, I'm not gonna be able to show you how to replicate this exactly because I just messed with this until it was an image that I liked. Um, and then you can just drag that in. After you drag it in, you have to change it to a sprite. So very similar to the normal map, how, how we change this to normal, you just have to change it to a sprite and press apply in order to be able to use it in this. And then I'm just gonna go through the settings really quickly. So. I changed the scale from one to 25. So each individual thing will be a completely random scale. So for this one, we wanted everything to be the exact same. So it's not randomized, but this one, we don't, we want all of them to be different because it changes like how each one looks. And it has a, like a positive effect on like the output of what it looks like and where the thing goes. It's random each time. And then we set the size random from one to three. 
where we're doing the same thing with the arc sphere as the other one. The velocity, we've only set to 10, so it's a little bit less than the eggshells. And then the lifetime is only one to two, which the other one is one to three because the eggs are supposed to live a little bit longer, like the shells live a little bit longer. And then we're adding an angle here. So this is in the update particle. So this makes it rotate. So each individual thing will be spinning. So if I play this again, you look closely, you can see each of these is spinning along the um, Z axis. Collide with plane basically just makes it bounce off the plane. So, um, when it hits the ground, it like will bounce off of it. Um, I have gravity on this one, which brings it downwards. Uh, I've changed the blend mode to add additive. So this isn't the default. The default is alpha. I dragged in this PNG file. I multiplied the size over life. So again, to add something, you just click somewhere and press space bar and you can add it. Make sure if you add something in this last block that you change it to multiply instead of overwrite. And then this is the graph that I used. So it starts at zero, then it goes all the way up to 2.5 times the size that it was, and then it goes back down to zero. Um, this is actually one here. So it goes back to zero almost immediately, and that's what gives it like the kind of burst and then shrink effect. Like it almost immediately starts shrinking right away. And then we're, we're again orienting along velocity, and then we're setting the color over life. Uh, so this is the default, except for I think that I've set max alpha here, then a little bit less here, and then this is zero alpha at the top, so it just kind of goes downwards. And then this first key is an orange, but it also has some intensity, which makes it glow. Um, and yeah, so I mean, that's pretty much it for the explosion. That's all I did for that. And then after you save it again, you can drag it and make a prefab out of it. So if you drag the egg explosion into your window here, you can make a prefab. So that way you have a prefab for the egg, which you're gonna have your character throw, and you have a prefab for the explosion, which is what will happen when it hits something. Okay, and the last part of this is the code. So I have a script called player card, which is attached to my character. And in the fixed update method, when I press the R key, um, you can ignore these things. These are things that are specific to my game. So the cards being on cooldown and the player um, being invincible, the, the, the player is a static class, which has a bunch of settings for the player attached to it. Uh, so you can ignore them. But if the input.keycode is R, it will check the cards array, which is like uh, an array of the names. Like the, it's an array of a class called cards that I made. But you don't have to put any of this other stuff. You can just make it so when you press R, it does this. So you don't have to worry about the player being invincible. You don't have to worry about removing the first card because like you probably don't have cards in your game. This makes my staff disappear. So like I'm setting um, the staff to inactive. So because my character's holding a staff when he's walking around, right? That's how his normal attack is. But when he picks up the bomb, when he's doing the bomb animation, he doesn't have a staff out. It's invisible. So this makes the staff invisible. I've attached the staff and the game objects to my player. Um, static class so let me show you that so I have like just everything for my character is attached to this static class so the game object for the staff is attached to my static class and this allows me to access the staff or a bunch all of these things from any of my scripts if you're not doing it like this you should consider doing it like this because it makes it really really easy but um, anyway yeah so this sets the staff to in so it hides the staff and then my animator, I'm setting bomb to true. So I'm using, I'm reusing the animation from my bomb because I already have a bomb where my character throws a bomb. He does the exact same animation. So it, the animation is called bomb. Again, you're not going to have this for yours, but this is how I'm doing this. So if you're going to use this in your game, you're probably going to have an animation for it. Hopefully you're not just going to attach it to a sphere because that's super boring. But anyway, and then I have a list of strings called attack modifiers and I'm adding this egg attack modifier to it. And then I'm creating the egg. So I'm, uh, this is this class bomb. Don't worry about that for right now. But this is the code that actually makes the egg appear above your character. So you're instantiating the game object. Uh, we're loading the asset at this path. So you need to put this path to be wherever you put your egg. So for example, mine's right here in this, right? So if I scroll this up here, instead of doing assets, models, imported models, objects, storable objects, egg, I would do assets, egg tutorial, egg tutorial dot prefab. So this is how you can load any asset in your game. The other option is you could um, create a public game object at the top of the script and copy it in that way. And then we're just setting the position of the egg to be the transform position, so my character's position. 
and then plus 45 in the y-axis so it's above the character's head and then we're making the egg look the direction of the player so the play the player's direction is where like where the player's looking is where the egg should be looking as well so that's what this does so this instantiates it above the he uh, head um i have this set into a bomb class but if you don't want to do that so like this allows me to do a bunch of things so you can set the parent of the bomb to be your character right so instead of doing it like this with a bomb you could set this instantiate to be a game object so game object go is equal to this instantiate code that you can just copy and then you can um set the parent to be your character right because you want the bomb in this case an egg to be following your character around so wherever you go you want the egg to be above you and stay above you so you need to set the parent to your character so you can just do go dot transform dot parent is equal to and then we're doing transform in this case because the script is attached to your character so transform is the character so you're making the um, character the parent and this will make it so that when you walk around the egg stays above your character until you throw it um you can ignore this and this and then we're setting the constraints to freeze all on the rigid body so it's the same thing where we just do go um dot transform like this so the reason we're freezing the constraints this will make it so that the bomb doesn't start rotating or moving around from your character while you move around it freezes it so it will stay completely still above your character until you actually throw it so after you've done that we're gonna get rid of these things because that's not how mine's working but this is how you would do it because you don't have a bomb class in your game right so then i've added this attack modifier string egg to my list of strings so in my player attack class um, th this is where i go to attack essentially if the player attack modifiers contains the keyword egg like the string egg then it starts a code routine to throw the egg and removes the attack modifier and then it returns so it doesn't do anything else after that and then this is the throw egg code routine so i'm setting my um my animation to the throw bomb so this will actually make my character's hands go forward to actually throw the bomb and then i'm taking the egg which um when you instantiate an object it gets like clone at the end of it i'm turning the parent off so that it's not stuck to my character anymore because when when you're throwing the egg you don't want it to be following your character around anymore if you don't do this when you move the mouse or when you turn around the egg will move with your character and then we're turning off the constraints because we want the egg to be able to move and then we're adding force i'm adding 200 to it and only 0.1 in the y-axis so i'm creating a new vector and only doing um x and, and z but 0.1 in the f axis and i'm multiplying it by 200 so 200 is definitely going to be way too much for your game you probably need to like if you're using a one scale like a very low scale maybe 20 would be more appropriate again just play with the numbers and you can do whatever then we're going to wait 0.2 seconds and we're going to change waiting to false in my bomb script this is a script that's attached to the egg itself okay so if we go into the bomb script um during the fixed update if it's not waiting so we're turning off waiting after 0.2 seconds so he throws it and then it starts going down right so we're adding force to the egg at negative 200 f per frame so that the egg will fall to the ground instead of continuing like flat like you don't want the bomb to go directly straight you want it to be going down as it's going forward and then when it collides with something if if it's an egg because this script is also attached to my bombs as well this is the same script for my bombs as well if the transform has the word egg in it and it's not waiting because it can't blow up immediately that way it doesn't collide with your character when he throws it because they're they're on the uh, layers that collide with each other then it instantiates the explosion prefab that we made this is the exact same code that we're using to instantiate the egg but we're just instantiating the explosion and we're wrapping this instantiate in a game object destroy, which will destroy itself after eight seconds. 
um, the egg explosion will only play once because it's a burst. Unless you specify to make it looping, it will only play one time. So this is the code to make it blow up. And then it just, it, you have to delete your game objects um, after a certain period of time. It's not in use anymore, right? So if you if you don't delete it, it will disappear after it blows up, but it will stay in the hierarchy. And eventually that is kind of similar to a memory leak where it's just like stuck there in memory until the game ends or you remove it some other way. But we're just wrapping this in the destroy that deletes it after eight seconds. And then this is the code that I'm using to either make the enemy chicken appear, which again, you could just download this from the asset store for free. This is just a free asset from the asset store. And then this is the code that I use to spawn loot. So it's only doing two things right now. Um, I'm getting a random value, which is just a random number between zero and one. And then if it's less than 0.5, then it spawns loot. If it's more than 0.5, then it will do, it will make the enemy chicken, essentially. I'm not gonna show you the code for the chicken because this video is already way too long, but um, maybe in a future video or if uh, if it gets enough likes or people request it or whatever, then I'll, I'll consider doing that. But uh, to get the chicken, all you have to do is go in the asset store and just type in chicken and then sort it by price low to high. And it's, uh, it's this one, this Mega Tune series chicken. Um, there's a bunch of chickens, so you don't even have to use this chicken if you don't want to. You can use whatever chicken you want to. And then I made another video on how to make an enemy script. So if you want to see how to code an enemy, you can go to my enemy script and use that same script on the chicken that you download if, if you want to do that. But uh, anyway, that's going to be it for the day. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. And uh, hopefully I'll see you in the next one. And remember to join my Discord because... Um, you know, if you're having any problems with your game or you just want to talk about something or you want to send me pictures of your game or you have ideas for my game, you can definitely just join my Discord and uh, yeah, 